Hey, are you balding? Did the Norwood Reaper snatch your hairline with a death grip quicker than the Kardashians run through NBA players? Well, if so, it's time to... Stop it. Get some help. You heard it from Michael himself. It's time to get some help and look into some solutions for your hair loss. That's what we'll be discussing today. As someone who has struggled massively with the Norwood Reaper in the agony area of hair loss, I have tried almost all these solutions and I wanted to give my experience on how effective these different solutions are. All right, well, starting off with D tier, we've got ketoconazole shampoo. Ketoconazole shampoo is used to control dandruff on your scalp and hair loss. It's similar to Nizerol, which is also used to treat dandruff. It does really nothing to stop hair loss at the hormonal level. I used this for a couple years when I started losing my hair. I used it about once a day and it did absolutely nothing for me, I can think. I guess it can't hurt to use, but this shampoo is also much more expensive than regular shampoo. Next in D tier, we have saw palmetto. Saw palmetto is used to treat prostate enlargement and hair loss, and it also suppresses androgens. I used it for a few years. It's one of those that like can't hurt, but it's not very effective. There was a two-year study at the University of Rome in 2012 that compared a 320 milligram oral saw palmetto supplement to a daily one milligram dose of Propecia for 100 males with like mild to moderate androgenic alopecia. And the result was that Propecia had better retention of hair in the top in the frontal areas of the scalp, but it is fairly inexpensive. Next in deer tier would be biotin. I take biotin each day and it can help with the production of keratin, which can essentially helps the overall health of your hair. Although biotin or growth in people with a biotin deficiency in particular. Uh, also, biotin is pretty inexpensive, but it doesn't stop hair loss on a hormonal level. In C tier, we have Topic. Topic can be a godsend when it comes to thickening up the appearance of your hair. It really does the trick if you have at least a decent amount of hair in your head. Now, if you don't have a lot of hair in your hairline or on the top of your head, it won't really give you the it won't give you the illusion as much, but if you have at least 50% density in an area, if you choose the, the the same color as your existing hair, it can honestly give you the illusion of having like a very thick full head of hair. I think the downside is that it's only temporary. Um, I've also found that if you swim in a pool or it rains heavily, it'll wash off. Um, I've experienced this. Also, it comes off on your pillow, so it's not like the perfect solution, and it's fairly inexpensive, but you, you kind of have to keep going back and buying more, you know, once a month. Next in C tier are PRP injections. PRP injections are basically injections. The uh, platelets found in your blood and activating growth factors can improve the blood supply to the hair follicles and basically increase the thickness of your hair. But as of right now, there's like limited data on the effectiveness of PRP. You continually have to go back for injections and they do nothing at the hormonal level to stop hair loss. From a cost perspective, PRP injections can also be pretty expensive. The next in C tier is laser combs. So laser combs use laser energy to help increase blood circulation and to stimulate hair follicles which basically work to promote the growth of like newer, healthier hair with low level laser therapy. I can say I used a laser comb for about a year after my first hair transplant. Honestly, I, <laughs> I freaking hated doing it. I think the laser helmets are probably much easier because you could like sit at your desk and throw on the helmet and just, you could do some work on your laptop or whatever you need to do. But with the comb, you have to like continually like run it through your hair. And it, the, at least the comb I used, it was like beep, it would beep. And um, I just really hated using it. Um, but I would run the comb through my hair for 30 minutes. And it was fairly expensive to say the least as well. I think I spent like three, $400 on the laser comb at the time. This was like back in 2014. So they're probably more expensive now. I'm not really sure. The laser combs, uh, the one, the, the upside is that they are FDA approved, so they have that benefit. Uh, now we're at B tier. For the first, for beer tier is going to be hair systems. So hair systems look a lot more realistic nowadays than they did in the past. Uh, gone are the days of the really bad hair systems that were really easy to tell. Um, I've seen some YouTube videos where they look really good and you wouldn't be able to tell, especially in the hairline. Uh, hair systems are really, if you want a solution that gives you that like immediate look of a full head of hair, 
hair systems are really the best option. However, the downside is that they're very, they can be very high maintenance. Um, they can be pretty expensive as well, especially if you use like a, like a typical like hair club place. Um, also like from a maintenance perspective, you typically need, need a new hair system every three to four months. And I've heard that some systems can be very uncomfortable if you have more of an active lifestyle, if you, you know, go to the gym a lot, you, you do something like CrossFit or you run, you swim. Um, I've never tried a hair system as I went down the hair transplant route instead. But if you've lost a very significant amount of hair past like Norwood 5, hair systems can be an option to at least look into. Next up on B tier is minoxidil. Minoxidil be can be found in oral form, liquid, or foam. It's fairly inexpensive for the most part, and it's also FDA approved. It works to reverse the miniaturization of your hair follicles, increase blood flow to the hair follicles. It also stimulates movement to the kind of like the growth phase, and then it extends each follicle's growth phase as well. Uh, from an application perspective, I've used both foam and liquid in the past, and I can say the foam is just much easier to deal with. You just rub it in and you're good to go. But with the liquid minoxidil, it takes it makes your hair like very, very messy and oily. And it can also like run all over your scalp or <laughs> run down your face. Um, it's it's just not from a practical standpoint, it's just not the easiest to to use. Um, also, minoxidil has some side effects that can cause heart palpitations and can even cause like dark circles under your eyes, you know, just depending on how you react to it. Next in B tier is dutasteride. So dutasteride, it's not FDA approved in the US. Um, otherwise it would be an A tier. Otherwise I'd put it in A tier. Uh, dutasteride works because it blocks an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase, which is basically responsible for the production of dehydrotestosterone or as it's called DHT, which is basically the androgen hormone that plays a key role in male pattern baldness. And detasteride inhibits two forms of the enzyme known as isoforms one and two. Uh, detasteride also blocks about 90% of the conversion of testosterone to DHT, while finasteride only blocks about 70%. Um, detasteride does have some potential side effects to be aware of. So some of the side effects of detasteride can be cold sweats, dizziness, depression, and sexual dysfunction. So, you know, I'd see a doctor first uh, to get their opinion before taking didasteride and also get your DHT levels checked so you can kind of see where your DHT levels are naturally before taking it. And I would maybe even get them checked, you know, six months after, you know, taking didasteride just to see where you're at after taking the drug. And also, if you get any side effects, you definitely want to stop right away. Next, we have hair transplants in A tier. Hair transplants work by taking hair from the back of your head in the donor zones and, transplant, and transplanting them into the hairline, frontal zone, mid-scalp, in the crown, where you need it the most, where you're balding the most. Hair transplants definitely work in a lot of cases, and this new, this new transplanted hair will be resistant to DHT for your lifetime. Hair transplants can be very costly, especially here in the United States. They tend to be cheaper in places like Turkey and other parts of the world. So cost is definitely um, one of the biggest considerations. You know, and also depending on whether you get FUT or FUE, you'll either have a strip scar or you'll kind of have like those tiny holes in the back of your head from FUE. Um, so keep that in mind. There's never a scarless procedure. I know some of those are advertised out there as scarless, but it's definitely a lie. <laughs> And uh, hair transplants, when done right, can give you a, a better hairline. They can increase your density. And honestly, they can make a world of a difference if, you know, you have the right surgeon and you have the right hair type for it and you have the patience. Uh, patience is definitely a virtue with hair transplants. They, they typically take four to six months to start showing results. So you definitely need to have patience. It's, it, you're not going to look better overnight with hair transplants, but it's probably the best long-term solution that's out there right now. Uh, lastly, in A tier, we have finasteride. So finasteride is FDA approved in the U.S. and it works similar to detasteride in that it blocks the enzyme 5-alpha reductase, which produces DHT, which you know, as you know, causes male pattern baldness. Uh, finasteride will block about 70% of the conversion of testosterone to DHT, 
Uh, finasteride also inhibits isoform number one. Uh, the downside with finasteride is that it can potentially come with side effects and you need to really be aware of this and you need to do your research and consult with the doctor. Side effects can potentially include low libido, erectile dysfunction, decreased ejaculatory volume, depression, suicidal thoughts. Um, about 1% to 2% of people who take finasteride report sexual side effects. That's why I couldn't put finasteride in S tier because there's a small chance that you may experience sexual side effects. As with detasteride, um, I would get your DHT levels checked before you start taking finasteride. Do your research on it. You know, look at different forums, see what's out there. You know, watch YouTube videos. There, there are a lot of people that have reported even persistent sexual side effects. So, really do your research before you start taking finasteride. I'm someone who's I've been taking it for about 10 years and I haven't really experienced any major side effects and I feel very lucky and grateful for that. But if I start to, you know, experience side effects going forward, you know, I'll probably stop taking the drug. And at the end of the day, none of these solutions I would consider to be S tier as some of them are very expensive. Some of them have the risk of side effects. Some of them give you scars and others just aren't that effective. But these are all so potential solutions if you are dealing with hair loss to at least look into and consider if you're looking to kind of restore your hair. Well, if you've enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like, feel free to comment down below, and feel free to subscribe. Until next time, take care.